I appreciate um, our, our media partners being here. This is um, this is an important announcement for us, and um, so the purpose of this this pre press briefing is to announce a, an interactive public facing dashboard um, that is going to be offered through our website. It's it's two public safety dashboards um, provide some comprehensive insights on shootings and gunshot detection in our city. Um, the timing of this um, introducing this website um, dashboard is not coincidental, it's very intentional. Uh, we're acknowledging our gun violence victims um, here in our city and across our state and across our country today um, as it's National Gun Violence Awareness Day and um, you can see these orange ribbons that we're, we're wearing that is to honor this occasion and those those victims of gun violence. Um, we encourage everyone to wear orange this weekend until Sunday, June 4th. Uh, the initiative honors the life. Uh, this is started honoring the life of a 15 year old um, that was shot and killed in 2013 in Chicago. Here in Columbia, just in the last 12 days, we've had five shootings with seven victims. And thankfully, all those shootings have been non fatal. Um, but uh, dating back to May 22nd, we had one person shot on Norman Street, two people shot on Liberty Hill, one person shot on Farrow Road, one person shot on Lincoln Street, and two people shot on Bailey Street. Uh, the, the, we're not here to discuss um, case specifics, but I can tell you that um, robbery and just genuine small petty beefs are tend to be the, at the root of most of the motives of these shootings. In the last four weeks, um, we've had an alarming 14 people hit by gunfire. Two have been fatal, 12 have been non-fatal. Year to date, we've had four gun murders. That's the same as we had this time last year, so we're flat. Um, we've, we've received little to no cooperation, which is, seems to be a common theme with, with our, new, our shootings, especially our non-fatal shootings. Um, Gunfire also results in property damage. And during this same time frame, we've had four homes that have been damaged by gunfire. Probably the, one of the most um, egregious incidents occurred on May 28th on Bailey Street, uh, where multiple properties were damaged when somebody discharged a weapon over 30 times. Um, in that particular incident, we um, also determined that the person that fired the gun was using the gun that had a Glock, referred to as a Glock switch. It's a piece of, um, um, it, it's a piece of nomenclature, gun nomenclature that alters the way the gun's fired and it fires in a fully automatic mode. Um, Shot Spotter picked that up and um, it's pretty alarming to listen to just how many rounds were fired in a short period of time. So far this year, we've had 349 guns seized and in May alone, we've had 73 guns seized. So back to the public safety dashboard, if you can um, pull that up. The purpose of this dashboard is it's innovative technology that we're leveraging um, as we always promise. It's transparency, we're sharing the data that we use to make informed decisions. It's um, you know, non-sensitive data, it's data that, that, that we should be sharing and, and I hope that the takeaway of this is um, you know, we often talk about, is there any shock value to what's, what's happening in our community? And um, it seems like we, um, it takes, you know, some, you know, horrific act, loss, some loss of life, something of notoriety that seems like to shock the conscience. Um, these, these officers and these investigators, they deal with this, um, these random acts of violence and the, uh, um, what comes of that, the tragedies that we see with the loss of life and how it affects families and friends. They see it every single day and it, it, it takes a toll. Um, we want to share this data with, with the public so our public can understand just uh, where we are as a community. This is a shared responsibility. Um, you know, we're oftentimes reacting to um, an act of violence and investigating it, but um, it's a shared responsibility. We've got to do something to, to um, change the course of this trend uh, forever. Um, that starts at home with our families, it starts with your neighbors, it starts with our elected officials, um, and we all have a responsibility 
and we've we've got to do some things that um, again changes this course trajectory. This uh, this dashboard aids in our day-to-day -day operations and decision making. As I as I stated, um, it's very resource focused. Um, it identifies our hot spots. It um, we think it will improve overall public safety because it's going to create greater awareness and allows our public to see the gun violence faced by our officers today. Some of the features that you'll see um, is it's citywide statistics of non-fatal and fatal shootings. Um, it's broken down by region with informative information and closer analysis. Um, you can toggle over pie charts and interactive maps. You can make comp see comparables to previous years and locations. Um, it shows the, the race, the age the group, the gender of the victims, the shootings per month, the shootings on the days of the week and the times that the shootings are occurring. Again, this is how we make informed decisions um, on where we put resources, um, whether it's operational resources, um, patrol officers, or where we um, put some of our um, partners that we, on the prevention side um, into the neighborhoods. Our relationship with Serve and Connect is a great example of why we, how we try to put folks in place in some of our uh, most underserved areas that are experiencing this crime to, um, to try to prevent crime before it happens. Um, in closing, um, the data collected from both dashboards come from incident reports and from shop spotter technology. And this information is updated by our crime um, analysts that will sit in our real-time crime center on, um, on every Monday. So it's updated weekly. Um, so keep in mind with statistics that numbers often change and it's based on the information that, that is gathered and um, is what we have, the, the newest information that we have that we can share. I would also add as we um, continue to um, look at evidence-based strategies to help us reduce violent crime, um, on June 7th next week um, we will be holding our ninth ceasefire offender call in and we'll have 25 or 30 um, offenders that we know are most vulnerable to either be the victim of violent crime or or perpetrate violent crime um, they'll have a they will um, have an audience with law enforcement leaders throughout the midlands and then they'll hear from important service providers that are going to make sure that they have all the tools that they need to be successful um, I'm, I'm very pleased to um, have Reverend McDowell. Um, he wears a number of hats. He's Reverend McDowell, uh, he's a man of faith, um, very respected in our faith community. He's a, he's a city councilman and he's our mayor pro tem, but it was important for him to be here um, on this important day. Um, and uh, would you like to say anything, sir? Yes, sir. Chief, thank you so much for the ability to articulate what's really going on in our community. To you who have gathered a very sensitive issue in the lives of this community. As you know, gun violence is now the leading cause of death for children and teens in the United States. Over the past years, we have seen an uptick in the number of gun-related crimes and injuries to persons in our community. Every day, 120 persons in the United States are killed, with 200 folk being wounded every day. It is important to note that gun violence is not inevitable, but preventable. It is our hope and our desire that this data that we have in this dashboard that will become a necessary part of what's going on in this area might be helpful and useful. Remember, 26 times the limit of a developed country gun violence is being perpetrated within these United States. 
Is it time for us? Can we, can we say in an unresounding voice, enough is enough? What can we collaboratively say that's going to move us from inevitability to preventability? What have we got to do? What have we got to say? It's up to us and it's up to every member of this city of ours to not only hear it, but to say something and in saying something, doing something. Thank you very much.